So what I wanted to talk about is what the RMS Media Center can do for you because I think there are a lot of things in the Media Center that people know about and they don't always um, know all of the little fun things that I can do. And um, so, hold on, there we go. Can I switch it right? Yeah. I'm learning, sorry. Um, Y'all know me, I'm Paula Reed. I've been here 19 years. That's a long time. I thought middle school was gonna be an interim thing and it turns out I'm weird, they're weird. We fit, it's good. Um, my certification started out as K-8, but only because my professor made me get kindergarten certified. Uh, so when it transferred to Georgia, I'm pre-K through eight, and if you want me to retire, put me in pre-K, because I don't touch things that are moist when I don't know why. And um, my master's is in instructional leadership, and at the time it was a money maker for Tennessee Tech. That was what a lot of schools were doing, which is why a lot of places said, if you're not using your master's, you don't get paid for your master's. Um, but I'm old, so I actually do have the certification. And um, my PhD is exceptional learning with a literacy emphasis from Tennessee Tech, which means I'm a really, really overeducated reading teacher. That being said, my dissertation research and all of my practicum experience for my dissertation is in staff development and how teachers use staff development. It's not necessarily in giving it, but more what you do with it when you get it. Um, so not that I'm watching you. Okay. So what does all that mean? I am a really overeducated reading teacher. I am pre-K through eight high school English administration and media specialist, plus I have a gifted certificate in Georgia. Um, kids who don't like to read are my favorite kids because to me that's a challenge. It's really easy to work with a kid who likes to read because they're gonna find books no matter what I do and they'll find books from wherever they have to get them to have those resources. If they really wanna read, they will have something to read. It, we're talking about the kids who read the back of the shampoo bottle when there's nothing else to read in the bathroom, okay? They're the one that sits down to eat cereal and reads the back of the cereal box. And um, if you don't understand that, um, that was me. And uh, so those kids are really easy, but I really like kids that don't like to read. As a media specialist, um, I make connections with a very diverse group of kids. I stopped a kid today, um, I saw him coming out of the bathroom, and I was like, hey, how's it going? And he's a stinker. He is a stinker. <laughs> like the first few days he was here, he was very memorable. And um, <laughs> for some reason, I connected with him, and it, I think it's probably because I yelled at him and kicked him out, and then I went and apologized, because I knew what I was doing, and I should not have poked that bear. And I'm the grown-up, and I acknowledged it, and I went and told him that I was sorry, that I should not have picked a fight with him. I knew what I was doing, and I knew how he would respond, and I should have acted like a grown up and he was shocked. And ever since then, he won't listen to a lot of people, but he does listen to me. And um, that's just one of those weird interactions that I get to have with some kids that maybe other people don't get the opportunity to have. And I could take a minute to go and talk to him where sometimes you guys can't because you're in class, you've got 20 other kids you're responsible for. I also have kids who come and tell me dad jokes every day at lunch. I have kids who come in here and hide. Uh, I have kids who come in here, they don't speak to me when they come in, they don't speak to me when they leave. Maybe they will someday. <laughs> that one that does that right now at lunch every day. She comes in, she does not say a word. I say hi, and I call her by name, and she walks right past me, and when she leaves, I say bye, have a great day, and I call her by name again, and she does not speak. <laughs> so maybe, maybe she'll start talking at some point. Uh, but if you don't love books, I'm convinced that you've just not met the right one because everybody loves something. They're, you know, you're not just sitting and staring at the wall when you go home. These kids have hobbies. They play video games. They chat with their friends online. They watch other kids play video games online, which I don't understand, but that's what my kids like to do. And so they, whatever it is they're in love with, they like something. They like dirt bikes. They like wrestling. They like football. And it may not be what you think it is for that kid. They, we have an eighth grader who really likes 3D printing and he's very curious about 3D printing things and he wants to talk with me about that all the time. And you never know what kids are into. So, um, but did you know that I have standards too? Because I do. <laughs> Most people don't realize that the media center has standards too. And um, instructional partnership is the biggest one. I, the biggest part of my job is to work with you for the success of our students. Um, and I'll go into each one. 
So instructional partnership is me actually planning instruction collaboratively, collaboratively with you and um, working on things that develop media center programs as well as classroom programs that are beneficial to both. So, you know, using the information and the resources and the access that I have and the space that I have to benefit you. So if there's a program you wanna work on, or if there's something you want me to do, if you want me to present something, or if you want to present something in here and have me help or whatever, um, I have done earthquakes with Miss Ellis, I have done VR classes with seventh grade, they're really into the seventh grade sciences, really into VR, and I've done that several times with them. So, um, but the instructional partnership is huge. That's what I would really like to work on. So if there are any lessons that I could collaboratively teach with you, I'd love to do that. Um, developing a culture of reading is also part of my job. And um, the theme this year is not just about me wanting a robotic dog, although um, I do have a really nice one picked out. And, <laughs> and, and it's coding, so it's several things. But what? having oh, that's your, thank it's you. not that's just, just I'm just so not I'm I'm not just so plotting against you. So having a theme in the media center makes it interesting. Um, I have a lot of people will come and tell me that things look different in here. The atmosphere is different. The environment is different, and they like that things change all the time. I came back from fall break with four new dogs that one of my friends had given me, um, and including a Georgia Bulldog. So I'm supporting the local team, and. Um, <laughs> So I like, I just like cool things and people know that I like cool things, which is why one of my friends brought me a unicorn head. So Davy Bones is wearing his unicorn costume right now, if you haven't noticed, because um, it's Halloween. Um, but I also need to promote reading as a foundational skill that's not just for learning and not just for personal growth, but for fun. And I would like to add um, some beanstack activities this year if I can. Um, I'm still looking at numbers. I gotta talk him down, is what I got to <laughs> It's $3,000 and I can't do that right now. So um, I gotta talk him down a little bit. But. What kind of? Beanstack, it's the, um, it's the activity program that the public library uses in the summer for their summer reading program and it gives rewards and you know badges it's you can set it up to reward students for how long they read or how many books they read or things like that called bean yeah. stack bean stack mm -hmm. um i firmly believe this is a judy bloom quote that librarians save lives by handing the right book at the right time to a kid in need so if nothing else kids in middle school a lot of times will say i don't have any friends well, books were my friends in middle school. And I did have friends, but I spent more time with my books than I did with my friends. Because frankly, I like them better. <laughs> uh, information technology literacy. Information literacy is identifying the need for information, being able to find it, evaluate it, apply it, and acknowledge the sources like, um, what should I wear tomorrow? You check out a weather app that's reputable and local, so you're not looking at the weather in like New Mexico, you're looking at our area weather to decide what to be able to wear. Um, that's information literacy. That's showing that you are literate in finding and using and applying information. Media literacy is being able to examine media sources with a critical eye for accuracy, credibility, and reliability. And our presidential election looks like it's gonna be another fun one. And um, media literacy is gonna be key for people understanding the information that is being thrown at you. So is it coming from TikTok? Is it being repeated by our news sources because it is the loudest thing on social media or is it actually real? Um, technology literacy is having the knowledge, skills, and abilities to use the technology effectively and responsibly. And what I've learned from these children is that they tend to know more about the te technology than I do. And when they are able to do something that I don't like, I have to find one that is willing to teach me, and that's always how I approach it. Show me how you did that. I'm wildly curious. Show me how you did that so I can do it too. And so when they're doing something naughty, like casting to Ms. Ralston's board, which has been happening today, um, I, <laughs> I have to figure out, I'm, and I know how they're doing that, but uh, I don't know how to make them stop. But 
using the technology, these kids were born with technology. My first cell phone was the size of a brick and it had a whip antenna that stabbed me in the shoulder blade when I put it in the back pocket of my denim shorts. So that, and that was 1993, because I was still in college. So it was a big phone and I wish I still had it. <laughs> um, instructional leadership, I feel like I do that pretty well. Um, sometimes people will come to me to ask for advice. Sometimes it's um, that I'm serving on the leadership teams contributing to school improvement and providing professional development like this or even if it's one-on-one -on -one, how do I do this I don't know how to make this happen and I'll sit with you and work it out and sometimes I don't know how to do it either and I freely admit you guys ask me questions sometimes I don't know but the luxury of my position is that my job is to do that research and find out for you what it is you need to know and how to do what it is you need to do effective practices for research so it's also my job to teach um, the students how to do research and the best practices for research. Um, we have the Galileo program through the University of Georgia, and I don't mind doing lessons on how to look up things in Galileo. The link to Galileo from my website is middle school Galileo, because Galileo is kindergarten through college, and you can find stuff at all levels and it can be very overwhelming. It's as bad as Googling something sometimes. When, you, when I Googled, um, I think I Googled a football player one time and I got like three million hits just on that one player's name. And narrowing that down into something that is usable and manageable and reliable uh, is something that kids need to know how to do. And I can help with that. Program planning and administration. Um, I do have a strategic plan. A lot of it is cooked up in my head and I, I don't put it in writing and I probably should put it in writing. But my goal now is to add to my nonfiction because I got rid of a lot of my uh, sports books in particular last year. I had uh, baseball players who were in jail or dead or banned from baseball for life <laughs> and on the covers of some of my books and I had teams that don't exist anymore and things like that. So I am trying to beef up my nonfiction and particularly the sports area because it is very small now. It was much bigger and I need to beef that up a little bit. Um, that is the plan this year. Uh, I'm always adding non or, uh, fiction that the kids ask for. Um, I need number three in a series, number uh, Five in a series is coming out soon. There's an Alan Gratz book that comes out in February that I've already ordered so that when I read it at home, I'm going to bring it to school and add it to the library. Um, but I ordered it so that I would get it the day it's released. It's already paid for. Um, <laughs> but I, my job is to support your job. So whatever you're teaching, if I can add to that, like if I know your favorite author, that's why I have so many Alan Gratz books because sixth grade loves them so much. Um, that's why I have Gordon Corman like I do. There are several of them that I probably should have weeded at some point, but they're starting to be circulated again because kids are reading Gordon Corman and they realize, oh, Gordon Corman wrote Frindle, and that's a whole big series, and they, can, they get into those, and, and they're starting to be checked out again. So uh, whatever materials or supportive materials that you guys need for your classes, if you need a picture book that shows these certain skills or whatever, I can do that. Um, I do have lots of picture books. These are part of my collection of picture books, and I have oodles of them. I used to teach with picture books, and I did staff development on teaching with picture books. And you can use them in any subject area. The one subject I don't have out, out here right now is math, um, but there are books, picture books that you can use with math, circumference and the Knights of the Round Table, and um, Anno's um, math games and several, and Anno's mysterious counting jar and things like that. But for a, you know, an eighth grade student who's learning about World War II, if, that, if that's something that they touch on and for any reason, I met Dorinda McConnell on Milani Nicholson, and she lived at Pearl Harbor. Her dad worked at Pearl Harbor, and she was there when the bombs went off. She was there when the planes attacked. And um, her father was in the military, her mother was Hawaiian and she still lives in the islands, and so I was able to meet her. Her second book is really cool. It's about, I don't know if you've heard the story of the two fighters who wound up face to face. There was an American fighter and a Japanese fighter, and they literally flew close enough at each other that they could see each other when they passed, and they actually met years later, and she wrote a book about that as well. It's really cool. 
Um, my learning environment is supposed to be positive. I think I'm working on that. Um, I think it changes all the time, but typically it's pretty positive unless you get overwhelmed by stuff and then you're probably gonna be a little over overwhelmed in the media center. Um, when I first started teaching and I started hanging things from the ceiling, the autistic kids would come in my room. <laughs> they had a hard time sitting still. But um, recent changes with the new furniture, I'm diverse seating, diverse work areas. So I've got standing desks, I've got lap desks, I've got bean bags, um, I've got my new presentation board, and I've got a teacher resource area over here in the corner. And um, I love suggestions. So if there's something that you feel that I need in here, I have a budget every year, and there are times when I'm like, well, I'm just gonna buy this because I want it, not really because I need it, but it'd be fun. And sometimes those fun things are not the, not necessarily what I should be adding at the time. I need to know what you guys think I need to add. And yes, I am looking for fat-friendly furniture for our larger students and teachers to be comfortable. And I was told chairs with arms are not appropriate. <laughs> so I've been given a list of what I'm supposed to do. If I buy tall chairs again, they need to be for larger people. And um, they're hard to find and they're really expensive. So. Um, but I am looking, so I'm on the hunt for those. Collection development is always, when I first became media specialist, this is what I thought I was gonna do, um, the books, and that's what I spent a lot of time doing. I was in charge of the Chromebooks that year, and so I'm always looking for what's popular, what is impactful, what is gonna mean something to these children, whether they know it or not. So the award winners, the best sellers, the recommendations, the notable mentions, the Georgia Peach Awards, um, things like that. And um, what do we need? If we're missing something, if I'm missing one in the series, if I have lost one, like there was number three in the zombie series that was missing for ages, and apparently those are really collectible. It was $300 on Amazon, and I had to get lucky and find a used one somewhere. So, um, yeah. Sometimes my books are expensive when they get lost. For professionalism, I'm, I am a professional media specialist, that's what I do, and I just try to share what I do with other people, so I go to my uh, RISA meetings and share there, and uh, I presented at GLMA about the uh, VR classroom, and I'm presenting in November at GAETC, which scares me to death, um, and I presented at the Middle School Summit at Georgia College, which is for the pre-service teachers, and they are learning um, what it's like to be a real middle school teacher, and so I was able to show them the broccoli that I removed from a Chromebook that week, because that's the kind of fun job I have. Um, communication, you can email me always, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, um, and I use the toilet paper to share information with you as well. Uh, there is a new toilet paper out today. If you didn't see it late yesterday afternoon, it is in the hall bathrooms today. And um, you can always check the wakelet if you need the handout so you've got the QR code. It's over there beside the record and then on the table. Um, um, using picture books in middle school is something that I'm really passionate about because kids don't get read to anymore. A lot of times they come to middle school and it's all about you have to read it yourself. And they like to hear stories. They want to hear your stories. They want to hear about your life. And they want to hear about what you know. And so if you don't want to share those things, then it's easier to share a story that is about um, just a, a picture book, a, sh a short story that touches on a topic that they're learning. So if you're talking about idioms, you could read A Little Pigeon Toe. And yes, this is by Fred Gwynn, Herman Munster. Um, I am Ruby Bridges. Um, Ruby's story is just amazing, and it's hard to believe that um, this has been our history so recently because I, and you know, the kids ask all the time on Facebook, when was the first time that you had a black teacher? Everybody asks that. And a lot of the kids that I'm friends with, our former students, I'll see, oh, it's a Miss Chisholm. Miss Chisholm was her first black teacher. I'm like, really? My, mine was my first grade teacher. My first grade teacher was a black lady named Miss Jackson, and she and her son Vernon both had afros, and when they nodded, their hair nodded too. It was great. It, I paid attention in class because of that. <laughs> but uh, I was very fortunate. So hearing her history helps our kids understand a little bit where we've been recently. If you're studying, um, um, my brain just went away. Alliteration, Thank you. Alliteration Bootsy Barker Bites by Barbara Botner is one of my favorite books. Um, Bootsy is naughty. And 
she's going to turn her into a worm and it's not fun. But anyway, this is just a few ideas and you guys can look them up uh, yourself. I have all of these, so if you want to see them, I have them. Um, my absolute favorite is The Terrible Things by Eve Bunting, and not that it's a beautiful story, but it's an allegory for the Holocaust, and it helps the kids understand why didn't they stand up and say something? If they realized this was happening, why didn't they stand up and say something? Because they didn't want to be gotten to. So, and it's, okay, this is the little handout for the um, toilet paper. I'm always looking for your best tips, so if you have a new app or resources, some kind of go-to idea sources, if you're using extensions or add-ons that make things fun or interesting or easy. I walked in Miss Ellis's room one day and she was using a pizza slice as her cursor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, mine was a lollipop for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So um, that kind of stuff, I would love to hear it just because if you're doing it and it's fun and your kids like it, then we can share it with everybody. And it's, you know, they're not stealing your good ideas. We are teachers and we, tend to acquire things from other people very quickly. So um, that's just sharing. Uh, please ask me when you have a need. So if there's something you want me to help you with, if you need an extension that does something, ask me and I, I have the time to look it up. That's, that's part of what I do. Um, Wakelet is something that I do a lot because that's what the uh, toilet paper is on. Wakelet is a collection device. And my favorite Wakelet is my poetry Wakelet, and I can share that out for you later. Um, but it's got videos and PDFs and um, um, audio files, and you can put all kinds of things in a Wakelet. You can, it's just a way to save things. So when I go to conferences and I get people, oh, look at this website, check out this app, look at this thing. I take all of those pictures and all of those websites and I put them all together in that, in that Wakelet, and I know that that's where I got that information and that's where that resource is stored for me so that I can just go back and look at it. But you can also take notes in there. Um, it's a great way to share information. It's free to sign up. It will link to Google Classroom. You can share them out with kids. When I was teaching uh, connections for seventh and eighth grade during COVID, I used the poetry wakelet as a poetry project and they had to read a certain number of the poems and then they had to compose their own poems and write about the poems that they read and things like that. Um, so you can use them for reference collections, collaborations. You can set one up for your class and the kids can add to it. Um, student blogs, digital portfolios, lab reports, digital storytelling, annotated YouTube playlists. Um, you can have a wakelet of wakelets on specific topics. So if you're looking for certain things and you're trying to gather information about a certain topic, you can collect information on different topics and, and have a wakelet of a bunch of wakelets. Um, your assignments can be generated by teachers for students or by students for teachers, like they're turning something into you on a Wakelet, or it's a virtual bulletin board. The cool thing about Wakelet is that it will contain anything. You just drop it in there. It's literally drag and drop. You can arrange it however you want. If you've looked at the Wakelet for the toilet paper before, it used to just be in a big long list and whatever was current was up at the top. And now it's got columns because I realized I had four years worth of um, toilet papers in there and so I separated out by school year and you can go back and look at the very very first toilet paper and realize that I have come a long way um, <laughs> and I looked at it yesterday and I was like wow I've grown so um, but what can you put in a wakelet text images bookmarks flip videos um, YouTube videos items from your drive PDF files on links you can drop anything into it um, you can actually type right into it you can drop docs into it so it's very, very, very handy. And um, I also have the Glowforge, and I've been cleaning the Air Assist fan today, which is why it's not printing right now, because I've been printing passes for lunch so that we can clean them, because they were using laminated ones. You can't clean that. Um, you can clean the acrylic, so. Um, it's a laser beam. <laughs> so, well, I haven't seen freaking laser beam, but um, that would kind of, you know, it's perfect, so. Anyway. Um, why? For awards, manipulative student projects, something to sell. Ms. Chiz, I know you always did your, um, your kids have to come up with a product or whatever. If they come up with a product, like they're wanting to make a Christmas ornament or they're wanting to make a, a stand of some kind, these are stands that were put on the Glowforge. Somebody designed these two little A things and, and they actually came with a big one and the little one that you got yesterday. So um, they're very, very handy. And 
any, if they want to design a product that they want me to print on the Glowforge, I can do that. Um, you can use it, anyone. It's yours. It's not mine. I'm just the gatekeeper. And I'm the one who tries to keep it from setting the building on fire. Um, that being said, yes, I've set drumsticks on fire. I set a piece of acrylic on fire one day, and I've set masking tape on fire one night. Oops. Um, I opened it, and it was flaming, and I went, <gasps> and I slammed the lid, and then I opened it again, and I went, <sighs> and then slammed the lid, and then I opened every door. <laughs> so I was really glad nobody was here for witnessing. But um, how to use it, you can send me any kind of file. If you can use it on your um, Cricut, I can convert those files or I can use those files. It depends on what format you save them in, but I can convert those and use them both. I, I had somebody send me Cricut files uh, from another school. She sent me the material. She said, we have a glow forge, but the lady in charge of it won't let us use it. And I said, that's crazy. So um, I printed her whatever she wanted me to print. So decide what you want, uh, wood, acrylic, leather. Um, I can do different kinds of wood. I can do different thicknesses of wood. I can print on um, popsicle sticks and clothes pins and marshmallows and I can make leather keychains. So again, if anybody's coming up with a product, let me know. Is it free? No. The materials unfortunately cost. Um, there are maintenance costs to the glow floors. I have to replace the air filter at some point. Um, right now I'm cleaning it so that I don't have to replace the fans and things like that. But um, no, it's not free, but you can find cheap balsa wood stuff and it will cut that like a fiend. Um, and it doesn't set that on fire, which is nice. Um, and it was purchased, what I, my idea behind purchasing the Glowforge was that the kids would create things that they could be able to sell for a product like um, uh, the CBE classes. That's part of their curriculum. They have to sell a product and then use the income from that product to make more product and sell. And so um, that was the idea behind the Glowforge. And the snacks are really profitable, so it's really hard to find that. Uh, the Media Center website can be found uh, from any link to the Media Center on the RMS website because our links all work, unlike other schools. Because our website is the best one in the county. And I'm not mm -hmm. just trying to blow them some sunshine. It really That's is. All I, think. I was looking for stuff um, from the other um, media specialists, and I could not find anybody else's media center website. I found one finally after digging very deeply. Um, but you can also type in sites.google.com slash walkerschools.org, then the MC at RMS slash home in your search bar, which is really long. So it's just easier if you find it from the school website and then bookmark it. And the reason to bookmark it, two reasons. Galileo Middle School and Alexandria, they're both on there. Um, let's see. So what can I do to help you? I can work with you on lessons in your room or in the media center. I can um, provide materials, supplies, space. Um, I've had kids making big people things on the floor. Um, I had someone ask me if I had sequins one day. I did. Um, did I have yarn? Yes. Uh, do I have feathers? I have real feathers, but I don't have those feathers. I'll have to go cut those out. So, um, but that's the kind of stuff you, I podcast recording. I have the headsets. I have the fancy microphone. I have all, I have ring lights. I have button makers. I have, in fact, I made this one today just as an example. So I have all kinds of equipment that you guys can use um, and research assistance as well. Let's see what I left out because I made myself a list. I am a stuff kind of girl, so if you need it, I probably have it, um, or I know where to find it, um, so just ask. I have a microscope with prepared and new slides that has the camera adapter that will hook up to a board. Um, I have document cameras, magnifying glasses, I have a classroom set of magnifying glasses, and a classroom set of um, binoculars. I have black lights, whole room, and flashlights. I have crochet hooks and yarn. I have all sorts of craft supplies, magazines. I have two button making machines. I have the three inch and I have a one and a half inch button making machine. And um, color paper and, you know, I've gotten to the point I'm old. I didn't think I would get this far. Miss Chisel, you know how I like to hoard stuff. But um, I'm old and if I'm not gonna use it, why don't I let somebody else use it? So if you need something, please ask. I have it, I will let you use it. Um, if you have a research project and students don't know how to look up information, I can help with using Galileo. I can use um, 
targeted Google searches to find reliable information, and I can look for um, resources for you. So if somebody's going back to school because you want a pay raise, uh, I had someone email me one time, hey, I can't find this article in the full article, I can only find the abstract. Can you help me find the article? I really need it for a class tonight. No problem, I had it to in five minutes. She was like, how'd you do that? <laughs> Skills. No. My parents were both librarians. I don't know if everybody realizes that, but I grew up at the University of Georgia Library. My dad was a um, cataloging librarian, and my mother was a reference librarian, and so as a little kid, I spent a lot of time in the library. But the Media Center is not just books. I thought it was just books when I got this job. I'm like, I'm gonna get to read, this is awesome. Do I ever get to read? No, I don't get to read my own stuff here at school. The only time I get to um, hang out for just a minute is when I'm trying to eat lunch and I'm usually doing three other things at the same time. But I have VR classes and I can do VR with YouTube or free apps that are pushed out to the headsets. And I can push how, whatever you want me to share out, I can share out. Um, the Chromebooks, I'm in charge of all the Chromebooks and the laptop tech issues. So if there are tech tickets to be written, I am your girl. Um, Chromebook issues are sometimes solved without the input of our techs. And our techs were here and hopefully they will come back because my poster printer is not working. Um, so everything else, I'm in charge of the poster printer, including all the frames in the hallway. And I know I need to print more pictures, but my poster printer decided it wanted to be updated, and when I updated it, it didn't want to print anymore. Um, the Glowforge, all of the printers, uh, the laminator, the button maker, the, I'm the TVA grant liaison, thank goodness I don't have to deal with them anymore. They were very demanding. But if you know a place that we need a bench outside in the schoolyard, I have six that need to be placed outside, and since apparently I can assemble them, um, I would be more than happy to put them together. We need to get some quick creek, dig some holes, and we'll put out a bench. So. Uh, if you guys know of a good place, let me know. Uh, I work with other media specialists. I'm in charge of the book vending machine. I um, work with college students. I've worked with book fairs. Um, uh, you know, Scholastic is getting a lot of bad press because their uh, diverse case is one that's an add-on case or whatever. And I, I keep telling them, don't, don't limit me. Just send me everything. I'll sell it. You send it to me, sell it. And, um, they sent me tarot cards in this last one. I'm like, are you trying to make me make the news? <laughs> <laughs> but I did sell a set of tarot cards. Um, I, I do virtual author visits. This was when we did our Alan Gratz visit, and he, he's amazing. We were so excited that he answered some of our questions. And um, the toilet paper, and I have a book binding machine, and I do cooperative activities with the public library. So that's why all the sixth graders have play cards, and the seventh graders have play cards from last year. And um, they're using them, which they, you know, they're going, the ones going to seventh grade, they're still using them, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, these are the drumsticks that I learned to print before. That's after I set, a, set them on fire. Um, how to find my calendar. I have a lot of people who ask me, hey, are you busy? Well, the easiest thing to do is look. Um, and this is actually a picture of my calendar this month. So how to find my calendar, you open the dashboard, you click on calendars, and you scroll down to the third calendar, and that's me, okay? Um, I put anything media center related, and there may be some personal stuff that shows up every now and again. Um, for example, Friday, right around lunchtime, I'm going to be at Finley because my son's marching band is coming into town, and I'm going to watch my kid play. So hopefully this is his last senior year. He said three already. And he's on a long-term college plan. But I'm like, dude, you're graduating. So um, hopefully, we'll see. But um, if you want me to do a presentation on picture books in middle school, I can. Um, if you have any suggestions of how we can work together, any ideas, any tech tips I can add to the toilet paper, any VR lessons you want to schedule, research you want me to talk to the kids about using Galileo, reading historical newspapers, because you can read all of the old Atlanta newspapers, and they're hilarious. But the prices on like cars and stuff, those are awesome. And the salaries for job advertisements, those are funny too. Um, and if you want to teach a hands-on lesson together, I would love that. I enjoy working with the kids. I enjoy working with you guys. And my job is to make your job easier. So if there's something I can do, please let me know. Um, I am OG RMS Media Center on TikTok and OG RMS Library on Twitter because Media Center is too big for Twitter. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not calling it X. That's dumb. And that's my website and my cell phone number and my email. You guys all 
can get in touch with me. And then if you want Wakelet swag, I am a Wakelet ambassador. I'm also a Glowforge education ambassador and they haven't sent me any swag yet, but Wakelet is sending me swag. So if you want to provide some feedback on me talking about Wakelet, then you can um, the, you scan the QR code and then type in um, your feedback and they are sending me swag for sharing about Wakelet today. And because you guys came, you will get some.